Hey guys, it's your boy, Coach C, and today I'm going to show you how to do number three of the Advanced Projectile Motion homework problem, like I promised I would. Alright, this problem pretty much states the following. Alan, uh, Alan Shepard of the Apollo 14 uh, mission to the moon actually did hit two golf balls on the surface, and, and he hit those with a velocity of 20 meters per second at about 30 degrees above horizontal. And today is going to be, we're going to look at how far do they actually go. Okay, well the first thing we need to do is we need to, I'll like to draw it out. You've got Alan Shepard here, and he's hitting his golf ball, and he hits it at 20 meters per second at 30 degrees above the horizon. So pretty much we have this angle right there. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to see if this problem is angled or is it horizontal. So example, is it angled or horizontal? This is pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious we have an angle right here. So this ball's going to look like this. So whenever you have an angle, the first thing you need to do is break it into its vector components, Vx and Vy. And remember how we do that is with V cosine theta for the x direction and V sine theta. And that will give us the initial velocity in the x and the initial velocity in the y. Okay. And so by doing that, we do them together we get 20 cosine of 30 and 20 sine of 30, okay? And that's going to tell us exactly how fast those balls, you know, that golf ball was going in the X and in the Y direction, okay? So plugging that into my calculator, I get approximately 17.3 meters per second in the X and 20 sine of 30 gives me 10 meters per second. Now remember, your calculator needs to be in degrees, okay? So your calculator needs to be in degrees, not radians. That's a very, very common mistake. Okay, so now we have these. We need to break it into x and y variables. Now remember, the only three things you need to write in the x direction are the displacement in the x, the velocity in the x direction, and the time. The reason for that is the acceleration in the x direction is zero, especially in this problem. The reason being is there is no air resistance so it's frictionless okay so we are looking for our displacement so I like to put a little question mark there and uh, we know our velocity in the x-direction is 17.3 and we do not have our time okay so let's go over the y-direction now we are on the moon so it's negative 1.625 meters per second squared. And if you do that, it's actually about 1 6, the actual acceleration of gravity that we feel on Earth. And the next thing we need to look at is this. We also have a velocity initial in the y direction, and that is 17.3 meters per second squared. Just to re-illustrate, children, if you draw this V, this V right here is how fast Mr. Shepard, or Commander Shepard, hit that golf ball. And these other components that we found are how fast it's going in the x direction to 17.3 and how fast it's going straight up in the y direction which is 10 meters per second. That is why we do this right here, okay, to get these values. Remember the kinematic equations that we use only work for perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical directions, okay. So now we have that, we know this initial velocity and we know the initial velocity in the x direction will be the same as the final. We need to look at our displacement. This is going to kind of help us uh, with our next part of this problem. And the vertical displacement, remember, is the ball starts on the moon and we assume that it actually lands horizontally on the exact same plane. So what that means is the ball is going to travel and land back on the moon's lunar surface at the exact same height as Alan Shepard. So we're going to assume that that vertical displacement is zero. And that's interesting right here because if we know that, we can then use the basic concepts of projectile motion. All right. If our ball is going up at 10 meters per second, at the exact same height or vertical displacement, the ball will be going the exact same speed. But, example, it has the same magnitude. But the direction is different, so we have to denote it as it's going down. So the velocity is different. Remember, the speed's the same because it's just about the, uh, the quantity. But the actual velocity is different because it's going downward, so it has to have a negative velocity. Okay? And remember, at max height, this ball has no vertical velocity. All right? So if we know how fast... Oops, it's not... That's not did I get those mixed up? Oh, yep, this is actually 10 right here. Forgive me. 
I caught myself, okay, so <laughs> don't do what I did, okay, make sure you are very organized, so that needs to be 10 meters per second. So if our velocity initial in the y direction is 10 meters per second, that means our velocity final in the y direction is going to be negative 10 meters per second, okay. So now, that's a very interesting thing, so this really helps us out. So if we know our displacement is zero, and we know our initial velocity is 10 in the y direction, and our final velocity is negative 10, we can then use kinematics to solve this. So the final velocity in the y direction is equal to v naught y plus gt, okay? And that is the uh, very basic kinematics, actually the acceleration, change in velocity um, over time will give us that. This is also, we can use this to find our time here. So if we know it's negative 10, it's how fast it's coming back down, and this is positive 10, and we know the acceleration of gravity on the moon, we can then solve for this. So just solving for this, we get negative 10 minus 10 equals negative 1.625 times t. Okay, I'm not trying to skip any steps. That gives me negative 20 equals negative 1.625 times t. Solving for t, we've got to divide both sides by negative 1.625. And that will give us our answer. And we get right at approximately 12.3 seconds. That's some hang time right there. All right, so that is how long that golf ball was in the air on the lunar surface. Again, please make sure if you did not make this negative and you move this over, you would get zero over here, okay? Um, we know that when Alan Shepard hit that golf ball, time did not stand still, okay? He didn't create a black hole and, you know, distort all space and time as we know it. So, again, remember, these equations will talk to you if you will just listen. So now we know the time. We come back up here. That time is going to be the exact same flight time always. Remember, the X and Y time, they have to be the same. So now we're looking for the displacement. Well, displacement is just the velocity in the X direction times the time, all right? And we know our velocity in the x direction is 17.3. And our time equation is just 12.3 seconds. So we're just going to do 17.3 times 12.3. And that will actually give me a displacement of approximately 213 meters. That's a pretty good golf shot right there. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tut tutorial, and if you did, give me a thumbs up, and I hope you have a great day. See you, bye.